Well, good evening to you and welcome to this program of Walter Rodney Groundings. I'm your host, Dion Abrams, and with me on the program uh, this evening is Brother Takuma Ugunse, and the two of us will be discussing the current issues that are uh, germane to the political, social, and economic atmosphere here in Guyana. I want to begin by welcom welcoming Brother Ogun to the program. Right, Dion is always a, a pleasure to be here. And the fact that uh, both myself and Trotty haven't been with you for quite a while, quite a while. You know, it's mm -hmm. good to be here to address our viewership and so forth, you know. Well, uh, we should apologize for uh, the absence, but it's not, we, it's not that we didn't want to be here. I tried to uh, get some of the activities surrounding emancipation, particularly in boxing on air, and then to some other issues came up. Uh, Brother Trotman is, is not here today yeah. because he is engaged in GCOM, you know, he's the GCOM commissioner. Right, right. And they are now, the, this is their season, they're preparing for the local government elections. Mm -hmm. And he has, uh, you know, duties to, you know, to go out in the fields, you know, and to do um, some work relative to the commission. So um, that is the reason why he's not um, here with us today. Well, the local government elections are set for November 12th. I see that uh, Bibi Shabik Shadik has mounted a challenge in the courts in relation to uh, the new uh, demarcations for municipality, NDCs and municipalities that she's claiming the minister did not consult and so on. Uh, before dealing with that, what are your views on the upcoming local government elections in, in a broad sense? No, I think it's good that the government is, is, is um, adamant on having these elections because um, local government elections are you know, a constitutional instrument mm -hmm. and the PPP in their time, you know, they held one two years after they came to power in 1994 and they never held another one for over 15 or something um, years. And when the APMU AFC government came to power, one of the manifesto commitments was to have local government elections, and I think within two years of coming into power, you know, um, we had the, the first local government election. So it is good that we are, we, we are, you know, consolidating the local democracy because it is important that the communities and people participate in the democratic um, expression of the political and social and economic um, life of the country. So from that general point of view, um, we have to get a government high marks mm -hmm. to, you know, for its commitment to the process. Now, the PPP challenge, you know, um, it's already it's in the court. I'm not too familiar with all the steps that the minister made, you know, to, to, to actually um, complete the, 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 the new arrangements that are in place. I know for a fact the minister do have powers to do what, what he, he did. Well, but I don't know all of the steps and whether all of those steps, you know, was done. I could see that on such an important um, renovation, you probably need a, a, a consult, a consult um, you know, a, a process consulting, you know, uh, uh, um, people. But I can't speak to what extent that was done. And anyhow, it is in the courts, and the court will eventually rule whether the minister actually um, did what he's supposed to do. Yeah, well, the president has said that the local government elections are going to go on a schedule. Uh, is there any likely possibility that the case before the court can derail the process, at least for... Well, theoretically, if the court rule that the minister violate, you know, and the and the and the court put in, you know, a stop to the process. It would be hard. I would be hard pressed for the government to ignore the, the courts, given the government commitment to the rule of law and so forth. But I hardly like. It's hardly likely that it will reach that the, 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 that point. But I think theoretically, I would say yes, it's a possibility if the court rule. The government will be in a difficult position not to abide by the rulings of the court. But, but as far as I'm, my understanding, it's not an injunction halting the process of the elections but uh, 
my sense is that if the election does go ahead and uh, the court rules in favor of the, the plaintiff, uh, then what happens to the decisions of the electorate? Okay, there's, there's another issue because the first question was given the fact that the, the, the PVP carried the matter to the court, mm -hmm. what effects that court action will have on the date, right, right. The, the process. No, the other no. If the elections are already held before the the, the court's ruling, um, the court will, you'll be faced a situation where, okay, the people would have already voted. Um, the elections commission probably would have already allocated you know seats and, and you know and the outcome. And if the court ruled that the poor, the process was null and void, then you have a legal and political crisis. Mm -hmm. You know, you have a legal and political crisis. No. Um, and I think we have to try to avoid that. You know, you have to try to avoid that. But, but in our uh, deposition, I read in the newspaper, I didn't read the deposition, but the report from the newspaper, uh, Bibi Shadik is asking that the court uh, makes a, a decision before November, in a timely right. manner, so right. that local government elections can be held on this right. set date. Uh, but with our court system, is that a likely possibility? Well, I mean, we could hope that the court will give priority to the, it mm -hmm. is a constitutional matter. They should give priority to it. I would, I would be surprised if they don't, knowing that they already know that they are, <laughs> there's a, a, mm -hmm. a, a date for the elections. So hopefully the court may address it before. So what is WPA's take on the upcoming elections? Are, is the party involved in any way? Um, Okay, the WPA is part of the APMU, okay, and if the APMU go goes to the elections, you know, in that sense, the WPA is involved in the elections. But I want to clarify a number of things. The WPA have always historically made it very clear that as a party, we feel that the local government elections should be, you know, an exercise for the people in the community and the political parties ought not to get involved in it. We were never able to convince our partners, you know, on, the, 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 on that score. So all previous elections that the APMU enter, the last elections, um, local government elections, the WP was part of it as a member party of the, of the, of the APMU. Um, this time wrong, there's some differences which I think need to be explained and to cl be clarified. Now, the, the APMU launched yesterday, it's Friday, Friday yesterday, yeah? um, on Friday, mm -hmm. they, 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 they launched um, their the, the, the campaign. And the WPA was invited uh, to attend the campaign, but we didn't attend the campaign basically because we weren't part of the discussions that led to the decisions you know, of the candidates and the manner in which, you know, uh, you will proceed, you know, to have a APMU slate. Um, prior to now, because the, um, the public should remember the APMU is not an integrated party. It is a, a, it is a, is a partnership of five separate parties. And both for the national elections that we, we participate as APMU and subsequently as APMU plus AFC. The process has been that you know the parties you know are asked to put up person person personnel to, to be on the slate. And the and, and those personnel, you know, some of them will be extracted, you know, and you know so the point is that the party put up your personnel. I I, I read um I, I, I saw um a news um, clip with um, President Granger, you know, stating that this time round there was a new arrangement where the communities will determine the candidates. And he, he's, he's making this point as far as I can for the first time at the luncheon. And the impression you, that's being conveyed is that the communities, you launch a, your campaign, but uh, you know, uh, and the impression is being made that there is an agreement within the APMU that we will abandon the old practice of parties 
putting up a um, list of candidates, you know, for persons to be extracted. So this new formula, where the community um, will um, determine who the candidate is. And he is selling this as a democratic advancement, you know, for the APMU, you know, and, and probably for the country. And I have problems with it because what it does, it takes away from the members' parties of the APMU the right to nominate candidates and, in, and, and replace it with a, with, with a format where the PNC, who is the dominant party on the ground, they decide basically who the candidates are. Oh. And that is being called democracy. Now, if the president tells me that, look, this is how the PNC is doing it for the PNC, I would say that's a democratic advance for the PNC because it, it is allowing um, the, the candidates not simply to come from a list from Congress, please, but for some democratic process outside Congress, please. That would be a plus for the PNC. But to take away the APMU members' party's right without any discussion and agreement to introduce a process which, when you look at it, the PNC will be the, the dominant uh, of all the advantage. They know the rules. I don't know the rules. I don't know. <laughs> you know we, I can't tell any WP person how you participate in this. There's no such agreement. And in as far as this, the, the APMU concern is a retrogressive step. It is not a progressive step. It push the, the, the APMU backwards, you know, moving into kind of dictatorial behavior. And I can't, I can't sit down here and tell the nation that I represent some, uh, you know, a, a big democratic leap for the mm -hmm. APMU. If he tells me that that is the PNC way to do it for the PNC as a party, I will agree it's a democratic leap for the PNC, and I will support it. Yeah, but well, I'm trying to understand the community deciding, and because as far as I'm aware, there was no public meeting or any kind of can, you know, saying that well, look. Nobody knows. I don't know, know uh, how this thing was being done. I don't know what, what was the mechanism. I don't know what the you know what the, 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 the principles. Nothing. It is just thrown on you a few days before nomination, mm -hmm. and then it is being um, baptized or christened as some democratic leap. Yeah, it's disrespectful. You know, it's a continuation of the, of the things that we have been arguing for over the last two and a half years. Yeah, but years. you mentioned that uh, in prior elections that a list used to be submitted by the WPA. How was that list treated? Well, we have never been satisfied. But I mean, you could live with it because the point is, you know the, uh, the process. You know you got to put up a list and you put up a list so you get a chance to participate. Okay, okay. We, were not, we, we never were satisfied with the outcome. Okay, but I don't want to spend time and argue about the, the spilled milk. Mm -hmm. But to take away the right of parties to put up candidates and to introduce a system that's only known to the PNC, and only the PNC could utilize the system, is, is bogus democracy. All right. Uh, because I, you know, the, even the list that you talk about, I, for a fact, know that, and that was aired in the public domain, that when the list was submitted, no consultations on the final selection would have taken place. Uh, so uh, the parties that make up the, this coalition are basically subservient, uh, subsumed um, by the, uh, the dictates of the PNC. And it doesn't harbor well for this whole question of, you know, is there a a real coalition going on. Um, the my concern with local government, and I'm happy that you know, in in many respects, people, particularly on the East Coast, are deciding on their own to participate as groups outside of political parties. Uh, the fact is the experience for many of them over the past two years, being part of what should have been the coalition, grouping 
was not pretty satisfactory and uh, particularly in relation to the management and our respect for the councils that were installed. So I note that a kind of revolution is taking place, which is good. Grovaslinton, for instance, uh, they have a grouping that has come together and they're challenging the, the PNC in that, cons that local area. Uh, people who were part of the Pleasant's uh, APNU contingent in the mm -hmm. last elections were so dissatisfied, primarily because of the way the, the management uh, and the relations between those who were supposed to be administering the affairs or overseeing the, the, the councils at the regional level, um, maladministration, uh, poor governance and everything. And then the, the attempts at taking away from the councils the right to govern has led to so much dissatisfaction across, mm -hmm. well, I know for Region 4 that people have begun to decide that they want nothing to do with the political parties in particular. And so in Pleasant, the former chairman and even vice chairman and so on, my understanding is that they're going as candidates outside mm -hmm. of the political. Um, and if people continue to push for that, uh, then your uh, and the WPA's position uh, that local democracy should really reside with the people mm -hmm. is going to take root. And I'm, so I'm not too dissatisfied overall with the fact that bad governance would have led to uh, this kind of development um, because there is a lot of dissatisfaction and people are demonstrating. I know last time BB did their own thing, they had their own mm -hmm. council and they ran, they won and I am confident that they're going to do the same thing again. So. It's pretty late now, but um, it's good that people are taking their own initiatives to become involved in local government and to charter the course of development for their own communities. Um, but uh, we have to see, and hopefully the, all the matters relating to court and all of these things that they're going to be over with so that the elections can go forward as smoothly and as, as democratically as possible. Um, I don't know if Trotty were here, you could have spoken on GCOM's readiness, uh, but I know, uh, I don't know, the last position we heard was that GCOM needed uh, some more resources and uh, one minister said that there wasn't any, but the president at a conference at Liliendal, at the, the Arthur Chung Convention Center, did say that they would find the money. Since then, I didn't hear anything mm -hmm. about it. Um, the, the last kind of, uh, what I'm here comes with GCOM. I think GCOM uh, is ready, and they are prepared to work whatever resources they, 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 they has at their disposal. So I don't think the resource thing will have a, a significant impact. I think they feel they have, you, you know, they could live with what they got and, and to deliver okay. credible elections. All right, well. I guess the, local, the last election would be a different thing. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah different. Yeah, certainly. Yeah, in terms of course. So, but I, I noticed Jack Leo and the PPP are asking for the involvement of the United Nations and all of these things. Um, you know, um, you know Jack, Leo, Jack Leo just be in opposition. And he's carried, carried his opposition things to, you know, there's some ridiculous um, um, yeah. thing. It is another way of accusing the government of, of, planning, of planning to rig the elections. Uh -huh. you, you know, that, that's, that's basically, what he, you know. So he, he's trying to, uh, to, to, to keep that going by using, you know, the, 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 you know, this argument that, you know, in order for us to have elections, we could agree on the results 
you gotta bring in the United Nations. And when he was there, he never thought about bringing the United Nations yeah, yeah, yeah. to supervise no elections. But you know, a country doesn't give up its sovereign divinity to whether it's UN or what just lightly. You know, that, that requires quite a lot of uh, um, agreement and discussion. But I think Jack was just finding another way to accuse the government of planning to rig the elections. He's setting the basis, not so much for the local government elections, Jack Dio had this on 2020. You know, so if you raise it now, he knows it's not going to go nowhere, but he's hoping that, if, that he, he, he could use that as a reference point for the campaign to get it for 2020. You know, he knows that between there's going to be no agreement for that for local government election, but that's not his target. His target is 2020. Yeah. Well, to the people who are contesting, I wish you all the best in the elections. And I, I know for a fact um, I was happy to be part of the Box and Falls, despite the challenges that, like we all faced in this region, Region 4, uh, that at my NDC, uh, the council, there was no division. Um, uh, for me, if that kind of camaraderie and, 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 you know, that need to work together can be something that is manifested at the top. Mm -hmm. Uh, then we are really going to be in a better position to take this country forward. Um, so I want to thank all the councillors from the APNU, the, the, the PPP and so on, who were part of that council. And um, I don't know how many of them are running again, but I would hope that the new council whoever is there, that they continue to work together as a team to bring the kind of development that, you know, really is needed. And if you get outside of the political sphere, then I think a lot more harmony. When I, you know, when I listen to the problems of Region 5, mm. I mean, this is, how many years you're talking about? Three years. I mean, <laughs> since the PAP began the power, yeah, the, uh, with it. And, and, and it cannot be resolved. Uh, no, either side, I don't know, but how is it that they're going to go to people in the next elections to say, well, look, we want you to vote for us? When yeah. everything you do, you're the administrators, you're supposed to be there looking after the interests of the people, and you can't even pull off a meeting to decide. I don't know. For me, I am not casting blame on anyone, but that is a situation that is untenable. Yeah. You know? Yeah, the people deserve better, but, um, you know, both sides have digged the heels in to some extent. Yeah. And I think both sides probably realize that I can't cla influence you constituents, you can't influence me constituents. So, at the end of the day, we can produce basically the same thing, uh, the same results. Uh, probably this time we will work with something. You know, I don't know. It's very unfortunate. Yeah, certainly, certainly. I, I would hope that, you know, but if they still have two more years going down the road, that somebody can be sensible enough to bring a halt to that situation that is taking place there. And, and sometimes you don't know whether it's poor. Sometimes you get the impression it's more personal than political. Mm -hmm. But even if it's personal, I mean, the political leadership must have intervene, I must assume that they, they, they must have discussed it and probably decide what is possible. So even if it starts as being, you know, clashes of personality, it becomes a political problem. We have to assume that the leaderships on both sides got involved, but yet still they can't find a satisfactory resolution. Yeah, and the people are not people the ones, yeah, the people who are suffering. Now, the other thing that is current is I in the newspapers today we see that after the strike and uh, the agreement for arbitration uh, but now we are saying that the talks have broken down now in light of these talks being broken down where does it leave the matter because no side would have agreed on the person who will take on the role of arbitrator yeah. So, where does that take us in the sphere of labor and negotiations? Well, I, 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 they will have to meet very soon. 
to probably put up another list of names. But I mean, we're going down on, on the road. That we, we're not too, we, we don't have a good history, but we, 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 you know, uh, on, on these, these, these names, these name games. Uh, but um, I look at the list that was put up by the teachers. I think they put up Mr. Armstrong, Aubrey Armstrong, yeah. who, who held, who was the chairman of the, um, the Commission for the Public Service right. Regions uh -huh. in, 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 in 94 and 95. And I think Aubrey is a, is a good person. And I, you know, I'm a bit surprised that the, you know, the APMU got problems with Aubrey. Um, they put up um, Jeffrey, Thomas. Jeffrey Thomas. Well, I, I could see how they may, may not want to agree with, with Je Jeffrey, given the pettiness of the, of the politics here. And they put up Rasley Jackson. I can't see how um, the government, you know, can't find favor with Rasley Jackson. So at least I think the public service union at least give them out of the three the candidates, the, 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 sorry, the Gantt Teachers Union, give them at least two candidates. I'm surprised that the government got problems with. Yeah, but many people were of the view that, in spite of, and that is why you know people were concerned about the fact that you oh know you're going into this arbitration, but it's going to be a a game of mm, drawn out, drawn out mm. process. Um, in labor relations, is there a time frame for coming to an agreement on? Well, the conditions of the arbitration are supposed to, to set a time frame. Mm -hmm. The arbitration <coughs> mandate will be that we try to resolve this problem within a given time. But we haven't reached there yet. Okay. You see? Um, I think the union entered the, the, the negotiation with good faith. Um, I can't remember what the names of the government put forward. Yeah, but, they, they um, have three names. Uh, well, uh, Glendon Harris and Derek Cummings. Yeah, okay. Um, I, I, I really can't speak to those names. I, I can't. I can't speak to those yeah. names, you know. I don't want to throw, you know, any... Um, Two names, in fact. You know, yeah. so, but the union seem not to Cummings be... Cummings is a permanent secretary and... Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. But he's a president employed. You see, yeah. there's a problem. The unions will have problems with persons who are serving in the employee of the government because you'll assume that the government could put pressure on them, you know, you know, to, to have them behave in a certain way. Which may not be so, but mm -hmm. the potential is there. Therefore any union would say, no, no man. I don't mean, want nobody that's right. under, uh, under your control. Under your control, which I think is a reasonable um, situation um, and position to take in our reality. You know? So we will be we, I I hope that within another few days they're back in the you know the, the, the ministry boardroom and that they, they could break this deadlock because it is not in the interest of the teachers not the interest of the country not the interest of the students this matter of, the, of teachers pay reach a point where it can be postponed longer it must be resolved and then hopefully resolved in a positive way that could benefit the teachers the country the education system and the children you know one of the things that i found pretty amazing apart from well I would cast aside Keith Scott's uh, disparaging remarks about teachers, but so much would have been even said by the minister and, and even the public at large. It seems as though teachers are not deserving of what they're asking for. Is, is that a, a view that is really uh, one that people should have? No, I mean, I mean, look. If you watch what is happening to the country, every reporter that comes from the United Nations, where they come from, wherever the government, is lamenting the brain, the brain drain in the country. Mm -hmm. And we have been hemorrhaging, we have been losing our professional people, the teachers, nurses, you know, and so for over 40, 40 years. And what's the point to train teachers? You don't pay them properly so they could stay in the system. And they have to go to other countries. What point? You know, you're being stupid. There's a point where you have to recognize that, look, teachers have, to, not, not only teachers, are not only professionals, but we deal with teachers. Teachers have to be paid wages and salaries that is comparable with other Caribbean countries. We can probably get there right away. But that will be the line of march if you to keep them. You know, so those persons who would say the teachers are asking for too too much and the teachers, you know, this and that. They're not being they're not being serious. You see, the problem the problem with this place here is that the 
people are so on the influence of parties that once the party say mm. it's wrong, you have a body of people who wouldn't think out anything, but we just spit the rhetoric of the party or the government because they are government supporter. I mean, I'm an APMU supporter, okay? But I know that that policy can work, and if you continue so, it is not in the interest of the country or the APMU, because a large number of those teachers are APMU supporters who we would expect to vote was in 2020. And if you tell me as a voter that the PP people's bad to me, they deliberately pay me starvation wages, and you, I vote you into power, and after three years you can't, you can't strike a reasonable deal with me, then I'm going to ask myself, what's the point? Yeah, but apart from that, the nature of uh, the approach to dealing with the unions, not only the teachers' union, is absolutely, you know, the PPP line. Just total disregard, uh, disrespect, disdain, and de making a determination without proper consultation and negotiations. And how can you, as a government that you know, would have been fighting against this very thing. You're not in the government for even five years or, or four years. And as soon as you get in there, you begin to perpetuate this kind of behavior. What does it spell for 10 years, 15 years down the road? You, know? you see, to be honest with you, you know, um, Dion, a lot of our politicians who spout democracy doesn't have a democratic um, real instinct, you know. Mm. They see these things as political opportunistic. You know, you have to say these things to make yourself acceptable to the voters, but they really don't actually believe in it. You know, we have we have we have across the board. The the, the British have leave us and uh, with a political system that develop a kind of political culture that power okay resides in the individuals and not in the institution or the office. And when a man become, you know, he get his power, he believe he, he has a right to use this power, you know, in a way that he sees he fit and proper. And, and, and they give short change to convention and proper <laughs> and decent behavior. You know, as a, poli as a political leader, you should glad for your people who come out of over 23 years, okay, of undemocratic, um, the, the victims yeah. on the undemocratic on behavior, the victims, you know, should be inculcating into them the democratic spirit, you know, the will to fight and to get what you want. Because at the end of the day, a government is only here for a period of time. And if you don't encourage your constituents to defend the democratic gains, and to push forward to get more democratic and social gains, then you do a disservice to your, your, your constituents, a disservice to your party, and a disservice to the country. And some of our political leaders are confused on this matter. The PP is clear. The PP never put any significant um, thing in, in, in the sugar workers' um, union, ability to fight. And they, 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 every minute the sugar workers were striking for more and more money. Even when everybody knew the industry can't really afford the demands. Mm -hmm. But the people understood that that is a large junk of my constituents. And I can't, I, I got to live with it and find some way to accommodate it. You know? And I'm saying that, you know, you, you know we have to learn. And this is what people are, our constituents are asking, oh, why is it? After they vote for you, they got to be subject to a behavior and a treatment very similar to the PAP used to give them. Well, yeah, and the fact is that the thirty-two billion dollars or odd dollars were, would have been pumped into the sugar industry, mm. and uh, yeah, look at what they're offering teachers. Mm. And right. Let me tell you something, Andy. And the government always can find money. One, it's a question of priority. Mm -hmm. It's a question of you see, the government only have difficulties not because they plan the budget. Okay, in a certain way in which teachers increase the wages of teachers and public servants was never a great priority. They decide the five percent, ten percent, however percentage, and they plan the budget based on them. So now you in the in, in, in the fiscal period, you could you, you make up budget limitations. But objectively, there's always money. They could always decide, look, we are not developing X or Y, 
but we put in the money to teachers and public service increase a, sh a budgetary shift so those things could always be done is 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 what is what priority you put to teachers wages and public service wages if you just want to give it a 10 percent of the budget you get 10 percent of the budget but you will decide look this is this this thing is important i get 25 percent of the budget the budget it means it got consequences for other areas, but that is the political choice I make because in the long term, I feel it is a better decision to make. You know, and that is why I always keep saying to our constituents, we vote our comrades in power, but we have a duty to put maximum pressure to let them to deliver to us. If we don't, and we play Banwari, we could be every chief, we will always get short change. Because this is the way the political system operates. It responds to pressure. It responds to where it feels it, it, its power could be threatened. And if they feel that the power, you can't threaten the power, they, are, they got you covered, then you won't, they, you, you won't get something. But you'll never get what, what you deserve. You know? And you always will be you know, just at the picking up the crumbs okay, off the table. But the most surprising thing for me, I don't know where Nicolette Henry got her, you know, her schooling and, and education in industrial relations and so on. But you have an industrial situation, teachers uh, have decided to strike. And you are saying that you're going to put systems in place which will jeopardize the, the system anyhow. But you are encouraging what we call strike breaking. Scab labor, man. And scab labor yeah. and so on. Ridiculous. You know, how. Oh. Oh. And in the early days of the strike. Well, well that's what I'm saying. You know, before I mean, the shows, strike starts. Start. <laughs> I mean, it shows your anti worker mentality. You know? you know? It's anti worker mentality. The strike can really get going over yet. And you don't decide scrap scrap breaking uh, um, approach. These people are profoundly anti-worker. Uh, but these are the people that we voted for. Yes, but we have to fight they, with them because, you know, here, we vote for them, we comrades. Yeah, uh -huh. Okay, but when, when we, we, we didn't know how they stay totally. Even some of these comrades are new to me. I didn't, even, I didn't, something I, I didn't know before. But that's not the point. And I don't expect everybody who come to the, the, the table because the kind of political experience along liberty and politics like we mm -hmm. but when they come to the table you expect them to bring the, the political culture and when they bring the political culture and, and they bring dotishness we got to tell them it's dotishness mm -hmm. and demonizing and teachers the, you know for, so we got to tell them this dotishness for standing up for, stand up for fighting uh -huh. it's like you'll be encouraging the teachers to, to stand up and, and, and try to show reasonableness and you know and there's a way in which you could the government or the minister could level with teachers or any uh, public sector workers you know in a way for them to try to understand the government position because there's you but you also have to understand the, the workers position but if you take the, the position that well look use the slave master and them the slaves and then you can treat them anyhow but if you see them as equals and you see them as part of your comradeship you know you 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 will never think about treating them the way i'm telling you you know this is political culture so when these comrades demonstrate these cultures in public, we got to address them in public. Okay, they're not a private matter. If, is, if the minister made a mistake in a private discourse, mm -hmm. I feel we can't come on television and you know I, I, I put you you know under pressure. But she actually was public. Yeah, I mean the, the political mistakes that the, we have been making is it's so so overwhelming now. Yeah. Uh, that you wonder what kind of guidance is being given to I these. Don't, I don't know. I'm not Jack. What, laughing. How do they take these the instructions? Where do they get their their you know ideas from? Um, it seems as though they don't. They're not prepared to listen. And despite you know the the continued uh, call for the involvement of of people outside of this narrow, what we can begin to call a cabal, you understand? Yeah. There seems to be no no attempt and at not, moving and in that direction. And they're not learning. So, they're not learning. You see, Dion, 
from day one we pointed out one of the weakness of the coalition is that the coalition has no rear, no institution within it. It doesn't bring its member, its leading cadre to have an interface with ministers and there's airing out of political ideas, discussion, static strategy. There's nothing like that. So it's, it's political stunt, stunting. So the comrades come in with the limitations. They have no exposure to anything different, okay? And, they, they, and, 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 and they're expected to perform, you know, I, I, you know, without problems. They can't happen. Because politics, like anything else, if you train a set of doctors in medicine, you have to have things, you know, programs to update them into a face with more experienced doctors and they go to seminars and so on, they test the theory and they practice and they learn. It's the same thing in politics. But I'm telling you, the APM for the last century, it's in power. They have never had, as far as I know, a process in which you have a regular interface between the APMU, um, let me say a second tour, the leadership, okay, and the ministers, and so, so that there, there is a kind of a jellion, and, a, 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 and so that we could bring the ideas of the community to them, and we could, you know, talk to them very frankly, and, you know, and comradely, where we feel they're making mistakes and so. It, it, it doesn't allow that. And in any political culture, it doesn't allow that. You can end up just where we end up. Yeah, and it, it, it could end up losing the next election. Yeah, yeah, you know. But that doesn't seem to be part of the, uh, I don't know. the thinking. I, I mean, I, I'm wondering how is it that in this pretty short space of time that it seems as though there is this view that we can go down this road and, and it's not going to affect the results yeah. in 2020. You know... I, I, I mean, anybody who be, I mean, look, I, I, I can't see the president, the cabinet, the APME leadership, the PNC leadership not being conscious that what should be an easy election, given the fact of where we came from, the PP conduct and so, when we won in 2015 with state resource, with state control and, and so on and so on, your, your management of the state and so on, we, I think everybody was, uh, had felt, at least for me, I felt that 2020, what we got cut the PVP right. tail with yeah. easy um, um, sailing. I mean, I got to be honest. Based upon me going to experience this country, 2020 elections have been a more closely contested elections than, than 2015. Yeah, but we yeah. have made these elections a do and die elections for our, our survival, which ought not to be. Uh, the number of people who through their bellies out, you know, and you hear the, the, their talk today, and you wonder, I mean, what is going to happen to transform them, to give them that same kind of energy, that same kind of hope that they would have had mm -hmm. in 2015? Because every corner you turn, the talk is that I am voting no more. But I don't know if, if people are not, this, this, this feeling is not getting up to the top there so that these guys have already put themselves in a cocoon or whether, as people are saying, the pocket done full so they ain't concerned if five years is enough for them and all that kind of thing. I don't think that, I won't take that part serious because I, I know the president is committed to continue. I think the president doesn't believe that he had enough time to, to achieve what, you, what you, he wanted to achieve. He got his sense of vision and his sense of thing. I may not agree to everything, but I mean, I know the president is committed to continuing, and I know the president don't feel he have had enough time to achieve what he wants to achieve. So, <coughs> given the political culture in this place, um, you sure Granger will be running in 2020 mm -hmm. as the um, coalition candidate. And in politics, no pol political leader wants to be a one-term leader, president man. Because mm -hmm. one term, you don't have enough. enough. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, you choose to be one term. There's <laughs> <laughs> a one term. You do one term, Chairman. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you want the few. You want the few. But generally, people yeah. don't feel, uh -huh. you know, that, you know, the one term is enough. Okay. Uh, so, having um, said that, I have to conclude that the president must be aware mm -hmm. 
of the evolving political situation around him. But I think he's been in trap because he played a big role in creating the situation around him. In the way he chose to govern his coalition. And this is basically make the cabinet the policy making body and the executing body. And so do you exclude the political parties who's really who the people vote for? And the political party is supposed to be controlling the cabinet. It is that we are thrown out, we don't control nobody. Mm -hmm. And with that, we don't have access to them. And that's really the fundamental flaw to my mind lies. And I think that the president is still convinced that he is right, that he come up, that is the best thing. That the parties, you know, uh, do, 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 do the work on the ground, make the manifestos, and the party end there. Right, and the government and, and the government execute and so the government is is yeah. a, a body by itself. It yeah. doesn't have any connection. There's no control by the parties. By the party. Which is not which is not, which is not the way the democracy is supposed to function, you know. But I think philosophy is a philosophical problem with the president. Right? I don't think he set out to be bad, or he set out consciously not to get these parties involved. I think it starts from a philosophical, a flawed philosophical position. And I don't think he knows, now that he is so deep into it, I don't think he could retreat easy. And then he's not in a party political culture that they say, look, mm -hmm. hey, this thing here will make me lose these elections. And comrade leader, we got to turn a new page and fight within the party for the turn a new page. He's not in that atmosphere. So in that situation, he will continue along the road for a very long time until something dramatic, I don't know what, happened that jerk he and his party into the realization that what they've been doing can't work. Personally, I don't know. I mean, I listen to the, 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 the president very carefully and so I know he invests a lot of time in the interior, you know, trying to... Uh, um, develop the interland yeah, but and as political that. persons I will assume mm -hmm. that if I spend a lot of time in, in a certain part of the country I'm also doing it from a national for national interest but I'm also doing it for political interest I hope it will result in more votes for, for, me, for me, 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 my party and government so I will say that you know ultimately this local government and the way in which I'm seeing the PNC approach it may be the thing that may finally determine whether um, Comrade Granger will continue along his ways or whether he will make a change. I think what happened there at the local government elections is going to seal okay, the direction in which the coalition will go. One of the things, you raise a very important point. I don't know, time is come, catching up with us. But the impression that we get is that all this concentration on the interland, uh, you're targeting a particular kind of vote, but you're seeming to believe, just as the PPP would have believed, that you already have, that these people belong to me, that they can't go nowhere, they ain't got anywhere else to go. So regardless of what do them, they but don't... They, but they could stay home. They may not shift from you politically. I don't, I don't see... I don't see much of you voters going to the PPP, but, but they can stay home but and they're just as bad. Mm -hmm. So you, you might be right that they're going to left you politically go to the giant PPP, but they might very decide that they may be able to sleep. Be up on your own. You know? I am only hoping, because we've been talking about this over and over on this program, but it seems as though we're getting nowhere. Um, and I'm hopeful that even with the time that we have, that some change can be brought about. Uh, because in the long run, you don't want, I don't want, the APNU to be out of power. Right. All right? Yeah, uh, people somehow have the view that uh, the international community and so on, they already stop, but the elections are already set because of the CIA and the this and the no, that. But we, but the, uh, and, I mean, the international community don't vote here. I mean, that's a, we need a, probably need a big uh, uh, voter program itself to, 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 that, to that mindset. Right. No, I mean, let me face it. The international community don't vote here, but there are influences. Yes. Yeah, okay? We know that our population responds 
politically and socially to some of the um, directions they think coming from the international community. But at the end of the day, in the election, it's who go, go, who right, go for the X. The number of yeah, votes <laughs> that counts, you know. Right. So while, yes, they may got influence and they may find ways of sh of flexing the muscles to show where the influence uh, lies, at the end of the day, if we who are contesting the elections don't convince me voters to come for the X, therefore we, we go skok. Well, I want people to understand that. I really want people to understand that because your vote is what matters. matters. All right? You can't assume uh, that these people are going to fix things for you. Oh. All right? Because it's a process. It's a process. And it's a, the process has a monitoring arm to it. Yeah. So we, they got to understand. So we got to fight to bring out our voters. Yeah. And a key component of that fight is giving them some, at least not all, but some satisfaction uh, that we have their interests at heart and that the promises that we've made, that we were serious about it. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to create the impression that the government hasn't achieved anything. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think <coughs> if you watch in many communities, the roads are being repaired and so forth. Uh, uh, the, the place doesn't flood as easy as, uh, as it used to flood. The city looks better, and the country is definitely moving forward. They have been able to keep the economy going at a reasonable percentage growth and so forth mm -hmm. and so forth. So we're not saying that nothing has been achieved, but we've been real politics. We believe that you have to not just barely achieve. You have to achieve, okay, at the national level, at a certain way, but you have to overachieve in your constituency, to put it the best way. Yeah. You have national achievements, which will spread the pie right across the thing, but you have to do some overachieving in your constituency because this is what politics is about. Watch America. As, as crazy things that um, Trump's doing. But he's anchoring the madness in the yes, constituency. Yeah. And many observers tell you that the, uh, that, that the president may be able to hold on to the constituency despite all of the criticism because he's anchoring policies within the constituency. Even though the constituency may five or years from now realize that they, 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 they get tech for a ride, but for the moment, he is, he is keeping close to his constituents. And I'm saying that we inherited a difficult economic situation and so forth and so forth. And nobody, at least I don't even expect the government to work miracles, but I still believe that three years should not have find we with no agreement between the public service the unions and no agreement with the teachers. We should have achieved a collective bargaining agreement. You see, you, know, they, they, you have to put in politics, you have to show, you see, the government have to show its constituencies some clear benefits. And to put it another way, if I ain't there, I gonna lose this, what give? Yeah. I don't think we have a lot of goodies that all constituencies could see and identify as goodies that come to the constituency as a result of putting the government that other people across the country got access to. You see, politics, I am being real now. At the national level, we have to be fair as much as you could be. But in real politics, you still got to tilt the scale in such a way your constituents could see that with you in government, it gives me some advantage. Well, uh, I'm hoping that somehow, by some means, that the transformation that we're looking for can take place. And the people is clear. You know, the people is clear. I mean, the, I don't want us to do as badly and as crudely as the people do, but the people supporters have things and a sense of gains on the PPP, which they feel that they have to go there and vote and defend. And get back. And get back. Yeah. You know. All right, you wanted to talk about the kitty market. What's the status of that? Okay, very quickly. Um, you know, the kitty market has mm -hmm. been under repairs, you know, for almost three years. Mm -hmm. And this, the, this, the city council is moving, uh, you know, to open up some stalls that they, they, they finish outside the market. And these stalls are being opened up, not in the context of the overall market being completed. Okay, so just the stalls that they rebuild outside the market will be opened up. And there's a number of issues. I don't know, we can't really, we don't have much time, but mm -hmm. I'll try to deal with some of the critical ones. You okay. see, 
the way in which the market evolved over the years, they got people who had three and four stands from the parents hand down to children and so on, they pay a fit, you know. Now that the market is being renovated, the issue comes, the council is saying that people who got three stars only get one star. Now these stars are private property, okay? And even if you, you move it now to see that people must only get one star, you have to find a way of putting value for the two stars that the people will be losing and put some monetary value. You know, and to discount that from the, from the present the new arrangements. You can't take away people's private property like a, a theater and tell them, you know, they, they, you know they only could, you're paying for three for thought or something years, and now you only got your one. You know, that's going that to lead the council into a big crisis and they can end up in the courts. Because many stars are prepared to take them to courts. There's no discussion and meeting of mind between the council and, 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 and the stallholders how you're going to resolve some of these problems. And I, my position is that if you're asking people to give up, two stalls, it must have a monetary value. You have to discount it from the new transaction that we enter into. Mm -hmm. And the next issue there is that they have built these stalls in such a way where people are in, in, in caving basically three or four concrete walls. Okay. The stalls have no, no counter, ventilation. Uh, no, no ventilation. You have no, no shelves inside. And to, for persons to put shelves on concrete wall is not, a difficult thing, not, you know, not wood walls. And you, you ask them, you want to move them into the, in that situation. And for the time they enter, they got to pay these new high rates, okay? But they can't do business. It will take them over a month before they could find resources and necessary skills to make those, 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 those things uh, workable. The only advantage of the stalls is that they are more secure. Okay. But it doesn't, allow, they don't have, it doesn't offer much for display. You know, so th that those are serious issues that, that, that would affect you know, um, the success of those people. And the council has to be conscious that they're not opening up the market. They're opening just a few stands in the market. Therefore, the competitiveness of, the, of those vendors are compromised because when people come to a market, you come to the bigger one, get the fishery, the butchery, a whole set of things that eventually help all of the, the, the totality of economic activity. But when you don't have 90% of the activity absent, mm -hmm. and you only have 10%, and then you want commercial rents, in that atmosphere is unfair. And then these people who are going to these stands, you know, they've been paying, you know, stand rents, you know, even when the market closed down. They keep and, paying for these there things. Is no and there's no, you know, and there's no, no rebate or anything. And, and, and King is hell bent, you know, that it has to go his way. There's no meeting of minds, you know, this, yeah, this, is, admin, this is the kind of public administrators we got who don't believe that stakeholders have a, a right to hear fashion the new reality yeah but that, that, that is uh, not modern thinking no in any form of planning or for development or otherwise stakeholder engagement yeah. and involvement is is critical it's critical so um you know, and this is how they spoil a good thing i mean i'm telling you the pvp refused to build the, a repredicated market and they set up a scenario for the market to finally collapse and they want to sell the land as a key commercial spot to their friends and their family. The Granger administration, okay, through the, with the city council, decided to repair the market. And everybody feel good. The whole community, the all star holders, regardless of their political loyalty, they felt nice. It was a plus for the president and the APMU. But then it took long for them to complete it. The council got money, the, 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 the central government, you know, put in some up to a point and so. And it began now, you know, so I guess a little diminishing things. People began, yeah, you know. But on. now, the, the, what, 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 what he's creating, King is creating, is a situation where at the eve of local government elections, there can be big nasty issue over the kitty market and takes away all the little political gains that the AFPM, AFC was supposed to get out of doing a very good thing for the community. Starting the start, at least the starting process. You know, it's like, you know, Coin, no, no, no coordination of political sense, you know. Well, it, it, from the bottom of same, 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 same old, same. Thing. Well, I, I mean, it's been a pleasure speaking with you. As usual, the issues brought to the bear are, I think, very important to the society in which we live. And I, I'm hopeful, you know, that by some means that these issues and problems that we've highlighted that they are going to be able to get to the the right you know uh,
people so that corrections can be made and the best interest of the APNU AFC could be served come the local government elections and come 2020. the 2020 elections. To the people out there, it's been a pleasure being with you once again. I do look forward to being with you next week. Same time, same channel for another program of Walter Rodney Groundings. Do have a good night.